In 2001, I got a phone call to come home. My father was gravely ill. I got on the next flight and traveled to Zimbabwe, Africa, and arrived in time to see him while still alive. My father's dying wish was for his children to continue his mission to finish his work in Igusa Clinic, which is in one of the most underserved and most impoverished communities right outside of the major city called Bulawayo. Well, it took me time to get there. So a few years later, I took on the challenge and went to the project site in Igusi and stumbled upon something I had never heard of before. Never heard of. They said, we want, we don't want the clinic. We want clean water. Give us clean water and leave us alone. Or oh, how? Like a switch turned on. That's when I realized water was the most critical thing. It was the most critical component. Water is a basic necessity, but it is the most critical component. Hi, my name is Lumbi Malambo, also known with my full name as Lumbimbi. I run a nonprofit called JB Dondolo, Inc. It's named after my father who passed away right after my visit to Zimbabwe. I'm here to talk about women, girls, water, ethical issues in a digital age. Well, the ethical issues that women and girls face with water can be helped in a digital age. Yes, even people living in the hardest to reach areas, and I mean rural areas, where communities are underserved and impoverished, it is possible. If they can have cell phones, Wi-Fi, and connect, yes, they already have some level of technology. We just need to tap into those and we just need to see what else we can do to fully integrate the water so that everything is in sync and everyone has water access. As a woman, now let's talk about how does the world water crisis affect women and girls? Not just as a woman, but for everyone. As a woman, I've always thought the water crisis is a personal thing. Because you see, growing up in Guatemba, that's also in Zimbabwe, by the way, I just never thought in a million years I will become so involved with water and become an advocate. <laughs> Nor did I ever think I would someday start a nonprofit whose sole purpose will be to remove barriers of access to clean water. For some reason, I've always felt that the responsibility of finding water relies heavily on me. Um, and I say that because Maybe growing up, I was one of those girls, those young girls who traveled to collect water. Lucky enough for me, I didn't actually walk like miles and miles like many women do. But I walked a couple of miles here and there, you know, just to fetch water. Still, I can never compare that to what many women out there go through. I'm sure many women in parts of different parts of the world can relate to that. We are responsible for our families and we are responsible for making sure we have clean water, clean cooking water, and water for our sanitation needs and hygiene. Let's face it, water resources may be far, but water restores women and girls' dignity, period. Do I need to say that again? 
water restores women and girls dignity period it restores our confidence it makes us feel respected without it girls skip school for fear of being shamed and women women and girls to be honest with you they must have access to clean and private sanitation facilities to manage menstruation and maternity safely and with dignity without water and toilets women and girls cannot live their full lives and this has always been an issue with all the water projects i've worked on you find that women struggle women are always at the forefront of everything women are always fighting for their children for their girls to make sure that they have access so they can go to school these this is everywhere and these similarities are striking wherever you go growing up in zimbabwe i can't tell you how many times i witnessed women walking long distances to collect water and they did so for their families for their family survival we all know that no one can live without water. It is impossible to have a healthy life without water. It is a matter of life or death. As you may know, our bodies are made mostly of water. So, unfortunately, many people lack that safe drinking water. They are left with no choice but to drink that dairy water. And that, unfortunately, leads to poor health and illness, and, in, and even in most cases, it leads to death. Did you know that women all over the world spend 200 hours collecting water? It's true. You can look it up. It's all over the web. Women and children bear the responsibility of collecting water. Imagine if that water source had to be so close to them, had to be so close to their homes or in their homes. How much would they have saved? How much would they have, how many lives would have been saved? How much time would they have saved? In this digital age, anything, and I mean anything, is possible. And we all need to explore some possibilities. And we all need to think about the lives of those who are in need. And we will explore some possibilities in just a few minutes of what needs to be done. You see, water is so complex. It is so complex. And it is linked to almost everything in the world. But this complexity should not stop you or anyone from understanding it. Research tells us that lack of water and sanitation locks women in this cycle of poverty. According to the United Nations, 2.2 billion people have no access to clean water. Wow, really? Over half of the global population, which is about 4.2 billion people, right? I think so. Lack water and sanitation. 297,000 children under five die every year from diseases due to poor sanitation, due to poor hygiene, or unsafe drinking water. And this is a leading cause of child mortality. I need to repeat this. 297,000 children under five die every year from diseases due to poor sanitation, due to poor hygiene, or unsafe drinking water. 
and this is a leading cause of child mortality. One out of four healthcare facilities worldwide lack basic drinking water. So let's think about health and safety of women during and after pregnancy. Pregnant, pregnant women also walk miles and miles to collect water in wheelbarrows, on their heads, etc., etc. Not a safe thing for a pregnant woman, is it? And an unborn child? It's too dangerous. It's just too dangerous. When the water source is located miles away, women have no choice but to travel to get there for their survival. Uh, it's really for the survival of themselves and for the unborn child. How can this be called survival when it's so dangerous? Access to safe water should be in proximity to their living quarters. Most of the time, the water they collect is unsafe for the unborn child and is unsafe for the mother. Unhealthy pregnancy leads to infant mortality and even death or serious illness for the mother. So what does the future of water and the digital age look like? You may wonder, or you may be asking. As it relates to women and girls and water ethics, right? So the talk about water crisis or water ethics is a decade old. It's a decade old discussion, which started from the issues of, you know, water really centered around water and um, the environment. It requires that we, re we examine moral and cultural issues, attitudes towards water and dis digitiz dis digitization of water. I can't even say the word. We really need to be talking about integrating digital solutions with water and finding ways to work together and for a common good. This kind of conversation has to be an ongoing conversation if we are to end the cycle of poverty uh, that is experienced by women and girls. The digital age is one of the ways that is promising to end the cycle of poverty. In all my work with water so far, I've taken a scientific approach that involves both science and technology to collect water and samples and to test those in the lab and to make recommendations. Obviously, it's not me making the recommendations, but, you know, the scientists. And this process, I find that it's always been very efficient due to technology. I'll give you an example. In Igusi Clinic, for example, they needed water because they didn't have any. They had, I say they didn't have any because the water they had was undrinkable and no one could use. The water they had was so unclean and so unsafe for mothers and for and for unborn children. They didn't know that. So when my organization JB Dondola went in and we installed a clean water system and we made sure that we worked with science and technology, worked with the University of National Science and Technology to go in and collect soil, sand, and water samples and to test that in the lab. They did that and they gave us the results. And from those results, they also suggested some uh, preferred ways of solving the water solution. I found, out, I found out that this way of doing things was a lot easier and a lot faster because we didn't have to second guess what the problem was with the water it, in Igosi Clinic. We didn't have to think for ourselves because we're not, we not experts at making those decisions. 
but I found that it was very useful in that it was fast and um, the solution was documented. Everything was done through technology and the system therefore that we delivered was the right system and the people there were very happy to have the water system. They wanted to stay connected. And that's when I realized that if there was a way to connect the community digitally, they will stay connected to me and my organization and will know anything that comes up right away and will be able to act upon it. But because they didn't have that kind of system overall, we had to go back to doing things the old way by communicating via phone calls or just hearing from someone that something has gone wrong. Another good example uh, recently is that recently uh, we took upon a project at, in Matobo Hills. A friend of mine, Dot Becker, introduced me to a new water project there where women, almost all the women there are widowed and children travel nine miles to get to the water source and nine miles back, a total of 18 miles a day. Well, that was striking to me. And on top of that, the water quality there, what they were collecting was not consumable. And the fact is they knew and they know that the water there is unsafe. Dot reached out to me for help and we partnered to help this community and we are taking on uh, a scientific approach again. We've brought in our value partner, National University of Science and Technology, NAST, to collect water samples and to test in the lab and recommend a solution. Bringing in value partners such as this into technology where everything is connected makes it easier for all parties to access data in a timely manner. Digital water management, as it relates to the tools themselves, are a gateway for the water industry to move from being reactive to being proactive. When we react to things, it's already too late because damage has been done. Water is by all means a crucial commodity. We can utilize the tools that enable us to capture data and optimize it and analyze it and make wise decisions that are efficient and that efficiently serve the people in need. According to Global Infrastructure Initiative, the water industry is going digital to boost efficiency. Wow, that's exciting news. I'm excited. A smart city is a system of systems where the Internet of Things, IoT, and analytics converge with, with the traditional infrastructure and the buildings and 24 seven operations. Smart cities use this internet of things and analytics capabilities to reach operational efficiency and improve service levels, sustainability and economic vitality. In other words, everything works in sync, right? So in many cases, Digital technologies transform the way cities manage water by reducing water loss and improving efficiency, conserving water and improving customer service. That's what they do. So smart water systems management makes it easier to maintain systems and they promise a quick response time on things such as, well, operational failures, water pipe damages, water quality, changes in water pressure, and so forth and so forth. 
So according to Simon's A Global Technology Powerhouse, linking and networking processes, design and operational data can enable all the technical and organizational processes and value chains for a wider infrastructure to be mirrored in a digital model of you know, buildings and, and the plants. And this uh, is bringing all these data together and just doing so will ultimately result in a digital twin, that's what they call it, a model of plant built from all the design and operational data uh, of a power plant, you know, over the entire life cycle. This model actively supports, it supports maintaining and uh, the information and enables continuous optimization of the plant design and the operation and maintenance. That's digitization. Already today, the water and uh, wastewater, uh, the industries themselves, they can use smart solutions for integrating and analyzing data, both, both on-premise and across systems and plants in a secure cloud. For example, Water Suite from Simons contains industry-specific apps for analyzing and optimizing water and wastewater processes. So you're wondering, how can digital water tools help women and girls? Well, I'm also wondering, but I think we have a solution, not just a solution, but several solutions. Because you see, water dig digitization and innovation requires forward thinking, and forward thinking applications and solutions all working in sync to advance sustainable development goals. They call these uh, the UN SDG goals. In my case, since it's water, is SDG six, clean water, sanitation, and hygiene. Um, according to the United Nations, by 2025, 1.8 billion people will be living in water scarcity, scarcity, and the demand for irrigation will jump up by 15%. Though it's not a silver bullet, uh, that they say, technology can help change this course, and already is starting to. So here are a few ways on how this is happening um, in remote, underserved, and impoverished areas. Water sensors and controllers are linked to mobile devices because in the countryside, they do have cell phones. And if we install those water sensors and controllers, it's possible. So water sensors and controllers are installed to the water systems and they act as monitors and thermostats for the systems. I like that. A monitoring app is installed on a mobile device and it is linked to monitors. The controllers for maintenance schedules, they allow the scheduling and uh, wirelessly communicate the information uh, to the controller so the information can be accessible remotely through an app on a mobile device or devices. The knowledge transfer uh, into those applications due to sustainable technology concepts is the main focus in water technology. That's beautiful. There's a way, there's a way to work in this digital age successfully. Let's look at drones. Sensors and drones 
can monitor water and water waste and usage. And this so far is appealing to farmers, uh, farmer investments, academia, technology companies, and researchers. Because with drones, you see, we can find out when and where maintenance and water treatment is needed. In addition to drones, um, actually, in addition to that, drones will be useful for quick response to avoid further damage to systems. Do you see how that works? You know, how everything works together in sync? Because I do see that being possible. Data hubs or cloud. Okay, a hub or a cloud for, for water, uh, for water data can provide up-to-date information about water and its treatment to key people. So they can take actionable steps, run reports, and make intelligent decisions. I think I like that. I like that. So let's talk about the benefits. Uh, benefits, of course, to women and girls whose problem we're trying to solve. If we empower a woman with water, she can change the world. <laughs> I like that. I really do. I like that. If women no longer are no longer burdened by the, uh, the water crisis, they can care for the families, their families, because that means you have restored her health, you have restored her dignity and her strength, strength for her to care for herself and strength for her to care for her family. Imagine how many women and just imagine how many women are out there with families. A happy woman, a happy family. Multiply that by millions of families out there. <laughs> then you have, you have changed the world. Empower just one woman. It can change the world. I like that. Women are likely to become innovative and start their own businesses once they're empowered and, um, and motivated. I look at it, see, I, I'm always thinking in, in terms of sustainability, sustainable programs. And um, what, you, what could come out of that? So a woman starts a business and they've gone through so many struggles and trials and tribulations. They know the survival skills, they've survived they know, probably they've worked it in their minds. They know what they need to do in order to survive in the future. I guarantee you, whatever they start will have a sustainability component to it. I guarantee you on that. Women have lots of creativity. And one of the things that once that, once they are empowered. Girls are likely to go to school. Think about how many people, how many girls can be educated, not just boys, but overall, equally. Boys and girls are educated. And that's exactly what we're trying to achieve here. So, and another one is giving women and girls hope means the whole family lives. Isn't that beautiful? Why do I say that? <laughs> when the water systems are in place and women and girls no longer spend 200 million hours walking miles and miles to collect water. Instead, their time is spent on learning new skills 
and starting new businesses. Because now they can learn anywhere, anytime. Everything is digital. We live in a digital world, digital age. One other thing is increase the abundance of water. Voila! Everybody has water. That's exactly what we're trying to achieve. According to the UN Global Compact, CEO Water Mandate, if we advance innovation in the global water industry through the application of digital technologies, we can increase the abundance of water. I think I need to repeat that. According to the UN Global Compact, CEO Water Mandate, if we advance innovation in the global water industry through application of digital technologies, we can increase water abundance. This also improves the water, the way water is collected, the way water is transported, the way water is treated, and the way water is used efficiently in environments across the globe. This will be a huge benefit to communities, to businesses, and to natural ecosystems. That's beautiful. Create new jobs. That's one of the things. With job creation in the digital age, poverty is gradually lifted. Isn't that what we're trying to get out of? Poverty, right? Yes. People are able to care for themselves. They are motivated about their health conditions. And this promises, to, this promises a brighter future for this generation and the next generation and the next generation forever. One other thing is, when you think about it, is reactive versus proactive. When we are proactive, we can eliminate problems before they have a chance to appear and thus avoid any damages that would otherwise be costly if not caught on time. Whereas if we are reactive or in reactive mode, we pretty much respond to the events after they've happened. And by then there's damage. And most of the time that damage is irreversible. So we want to be proactive and this is possible in a digital world. That is the way to go. With systems that are connected in a digital world, we can be proactive. Efficiency and quick response is one of them. So we reduce water loss and improve water efficiency. We improve the way we service communities we analyze efficiently and we service people uh, that I need more efficiently and through well-informed and well-researched decisions based on the data we collect. Also, a quick response on times and times on things such as, of course, which I mentioned earlier, operational failures, water damages, uh, pipe damages, Water quality, water quality, changes in water uh, pressure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. So let us look at our learning outcomes here. What have we learned? So we talked about digitize, and we said that everything is in sync and connected digitally. That in, it also includes our value partners, you know, science and technology, the smart water systems, sensors, monitoring, mobile devices, um, drones, reporting, and all that, right? As part of this digitization. And uh, we also looked at um, how we restore dignity 
because this is about women and, and girls. So when we digitize, we're able to respect, to show that we respect women and girls because they do need respect. We're able to empower women and girls today. And once they're empowered, we, we did find out that once they're empowered, they can change the world. A powerful woman has a voice and we, we give them that voice. And I think that's beautiful. And we did look at sustainability. What, um, when the women and girls are empowered, that they can start, uh, they can be creative, they are motivated, they can start their own businesses, and um, they're always thinking sustainable, sustainability, because they have learned so much, they've survived, they know what it takes to survive. They know what to do right and what to do wrong. And besides, they're also getting educated. They're connected online because everything is digital. There's training and all that stimulates creativity and they grow and we all grow at the economy and we get out of poverty. Girls get out of poverty, mothers get out of poverty, and that's exactly what we want. We don't want them stuck in that, in that, that cycle of poverty that they're in right now that they can't get out of because not everything right now is in sync, not everything is connected, but we need to get there. So in conclusion, I would like to say the water industry is going digital. And this is good for women and girls. Not just for women and girls. We all know that it's good for everyone because we are all fighting for, for water. Water is global. Water is complex, but the responsibility, the main responsibility relies on women and girls. We've seen that, how they travel miles and miles to collect water and most of the time is dirty water. The digital age requires that we analyze the existing structure and organization and that we document the outcomes. Digitization will change the way the water industry designs, builds, operates, maintains water and waste water facilities. Therefore, women and girls can get out of the cycle of poverty and live healthy lives and dignified lives where water is within reach, where information is readily available and accessible, and where all this gives them more time with their families because everything, and I mean <laughs> everything, is connected. And all parties involved communicate faster and easier to restore problems as they arise. And let's just remember that an empowered woman has a voice. And with that voice, they become change agents and they can change the world. We need more change agents for water. We need more voices for water. Change agents can come from anywhere in the world. A change agent doesn't have to be one person. I am a change agent. I am a woman who has lived through those situations where I too walked a few miles 
I too pushed water in wheelbarrows. I too carried water on my head. But I always ask myself this question, was that water safe for consumption? And if I hadn't done it, who would have? As I said, when I started my speech, I've always felt the responsibility lies on me as a woman to collect water, to make sure that everyone has water. But I am very hopeful that with the digital age that we can change how we deal with water. We can change the life of women and girls because the digital age is a way to go. I hope that this has been a valuable information, uh, has been valuable information for you and anyone you are trying to help. Let us all rise up and be change agents and be voices for water in this digital age. Let us help women and girls. Let us make more girls go to school. Let us restore hope. Let us restore confidence. Everyone deserves a chance to life, to full life. And it doesn't have to be because of water that people are left behind. We can change the outcome. Let us all embrace technology. Thank you so much for listening here. And I'm proud of you that whatever you're doing to help women is helping women out there. Never give up, never give up hope. There is a light at the end of the tunnel and I know we can do it together as one.